Tapping on the setup mode button shows you the list of lesson topics and not only allows you to choose which diagrams to show or hide, but also lets you duplicate, edit and delete slides or create them from new. You can also manage your lesson folders, allowing you to add and name your own folders, perhaps to add additional categories. The edit feature allows you to rearrange your folders by using the bars on the right and also lets you delete folders. Simply tap on the no entry sign then hit delete to confirm. As before, you can also swipe right to left on a folder to delete it. There's a button top right if you want to add a new folder, perhaps for a new group of diagrams, such as a different category, or to group nearby junctions by location. Tap the blue done button to go back to the setup area. Still within the setup area, tapping on the lesson folder brings up the manage menu for that folder. It shows a list of diagrams for the folder and tapping on each diagram shows a preview in the lower pane so you can quickly find the diagram you want. At the top of the window you'll see the sort button. Tap on this if you want to rearrange the order in which the diagrams are displayed. As before, use the grey bars on the far right hand side and move the lines up and down to the correct position. There's a button lower down for duplicating the existing images but if you want to add a new diagram from scratch, simply tap on add, the plus sign in the top right hand corner. A new window will allow you to specify where to look for your new material. All of the pre-drawn diagrams we've provided in the app are in the existing resources section. However, you can also add from maps and satellite views of actual junctions, camera or album photographs, such as a photo of your dashboard for the controls lesson, or paste copied clipboard items. To add a new diagram from the road layout, go to Existing Resources, then Diagram Pack 1. Any items you've already added will also be shown in the Resources area. Scroll up and down through the diagrams available. Tapping on one will show a preview in the window below, allowing you to find the ideal image as easily as possible. Having added the diagram and given it a name, we can customise it later, and I'll show you how further on in the video. If you want to add a specific local junction as an example, use the Maps Importer feature from the Add button. You'll need some form of internet access for this feature, but as mentioned before, lesson diagrams would normally be prepared in advance of the lessons and then used over and over again. The maps can use your current location and would default to a maps view to allow you to find your surroundings as quickly as possible. If this is the first time you've used this feature, you might need to give the app permission to use your current location. Either the app will prompt you, or you can go to the iPad settings, then choose privacy, then location services, allowing you to make sure your location is found straight away. Tap the mode button to change from map view to an aerial photo, either from Google or Apple. Remember you can change the orientation of the iPad from landscape to portrait, or vice versa, so that it best fits the layout of the junction. With the move to iOS 6, Apple decided to replace the Google Maps feature on the iPad with their own Apple Maps program. However, some users have found that their local area isn't yet sufficiently well covered at a detailed junction level. Although Apple is working hard to improve this, some of the aerial photos currently available wouldn't be suitable for use in the app. So with our latest release, we've also allowed you to select the original Google Maps aerial images as well. Choosing this option will open a version of the Google aerial images and also allows you to pinpoint your location automatically using the location button at the bottom. You'll also notice that where available, Google will also offer the street view icon in the top left hand corner, allowing you to use street view images as part of your lessons as well. When you're happy with the image, tap the save button and name your image. If you're adding into a lesson category, you may find it useful to put the town name before the junction name so you can find and identify images more easily later on. Or alternatively, you could create a separate folder for that town and just add the images into there directly. Your new image will be added to the far end of the list of diagrams for that folder. However, you can use edit as before to rearrange the diagrams if required. If you have your own images that you want to use, 
import them onto the iPad using iPhoto and iTunes or Mail and use the Photos Importer feature from the Add button. Simply browse your available folders to find the image you want, then tap in order to add it. If you want to, you can create your own diagrams, montages, posters, etc. using apps such as Pages or Keynote and save them as images, then import them using this method. To save them as images, you can record a screenshot on the iPad. Simply press both main buttons at the same time, the Sleep button on the top edge of the iPad and the Home button below the screen. This then adds the image into your camera roll. You can also add an empty diagram if you simply want a blank page on which to draw. The Show and Hide buttons will automatically be greyed out if they are unavailable. So if Hide is the only available option, then the diagram must be visible. Likewise, if Show is available, then the image must currently be hidden. The Duplicate button allows you to copy the selected diagram, perhaps to make a customised version without losing the original. The original could always be hidden if you were planning to use your own version instead, so that you still have it. The new diagram will need to be given a unique name within the folder in order to be saved. Duplicating the diagram will also duplicate any saved annotations, and if necessary, you can amend these later in Draw Mode. The delete button deletes the diagram completely. You may often prefer to simply hide unwanted diagrams so you have them still for future reference. The rename field allows you to change the name of the diagram. Remember that this will be shown above the diagram when you swipe through during lessons. Finally, the edits button allows you to customize the image to suit your own style of instruction. The diagram is shown with four buttons, back, save, add, and undo. Back allows you to finish editing and allows you to save or discard your changes. Save allows you to protect the changes you have already made but without exiting. Add allows you to insert objects, vehicles, text etc to get the exact look you want. I'll come back to this in a moment. The undo button allows you to remove the last changes made but make sure you wait for each undo to complete before tapping again. If you tap too many times, you might undo more than you'd planned. All of the diagrams provided with the software were created using these tools. So let's look at how you can get the exact diagrams that you want. Having tapped the Add button, you'll see there's now a choice of items to add. The first group is vehicles, then shapes, road signs, objects such as people and trees, text, or custom, which includes photos and clipboard items. If you select an item, such as a vehicle or pedestrian, the new image will be displayed in the centre of the screen. Chances are the new image will be too big, so to reduce its size, simply tap the object until it is shown as selected, with the thin blue border, then press and hold the image until the menu is displayed. The menu will offer four options, Fine Tune, Duplicate, Hide in Diagram, and delete. The menu will display elsewhere on the screen so that you can place the image accurately. Fine Tune allows you to scale and rotate the image as required. Most items load at half size, i.e. 0.5 or 50%. So if the new item needed to be half the size it's initially shown, change the scale figure from 0.5 to 0.25, or press the minus button until the correct size is achieved. To rotate the item a quarter turn clockwise, i.e. 90 degrees, simply amend the figure in the lower box from 0 to 90. To rotate anti-clockwise, enter minus 90 or 270. The rotate buttons can also be used to fine tune the exact angle required. The duplicate option allows you to create an exact duplicate item at the same scale and angle as the original making it quick and easy to get the diagrams that are perfect for you. The Hide in Diagram option allows you to add items that are not normally visible, but are shown only in Move mode, allowing you to use a simple, easy to understand image in lessons, but quickly bring in additional items if using the Move mode feature. Watch the Diagrams tutorial to see how this can work.
Finally, the delete button removes the selected item. You'll notice in fine tune that the window shows the size, orientation and location of each item, allowing you to create your own animated slideshows if required. By using the duplicate slide feature, you can then edit the new diagram, moving an item slightly in order to create a flipbook style animation. Remember to duplicate, modify and save each new diagram one at a time so that you can create a seamless movement effect. If you wish, you can add reference lines to help positioning and then you can edit again later to remove them once you've finished. If you look at the parking bay lessons, you'll see that I've already included some examples. Running my finger along the scroll bar at the bottom creates the animation effect that I'm looking for. You can also overlay multiple items on top of each other if that helps achieve the desired effect. With a 45 degree bay park, I have multiple items. However, going into setup mode, there are also hidden images with the same movement effect as you've seen in the 90 degree bay park. If I now show these additional hidden images, you'll see the same movement effect. As you can see, the diagrams are now limited only by your imagination. You can create whatever effect you'd like. Instructor Software would love to see what you can come up with, so feel free to send us a photo of your best diagrams and we'll post them on our Facebook page as inspiration for other ADIs. Finally, coming out of setup mode, use the finish button to take you back to the lessons menu, then the driving instructor button to return to the main menu as before. Thank you again for choosing the Driving Instructor app. If you need any further help or advice with getting these diagrams set up, or if you can think of any new road layout diagrams that will be particularly useful for you, visit us at instructorsoftware.com and use the Contact Us page to send us your feedback.